Well, welcome everybody to uh, 2022's installment of the Ihanzu Symposium. Again, uh, we've been working hard for a, uh, a long time now. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to sort of have this chance to come together face to face and to celebrate um, the work that we've done, the language, uh, as well as kind of um, our analyses and to share them with each other and uh, with our colleagues who are interested on the uh, worldwide web. So uh, I'm really pleased to see us all here. Uh, Ihanzu is, uh, so it's spoken in Tanzania, primarily in North Central Tanzania. And uh, it's an area that myself and others often refer to as the Tanzanian Rift Valley. So from an administrative perspective, spoken in and around Kalama district, which itself is in the larger Singida region, and geographically the area is largely flat, uh, with one large sort of hill system in the uh, center. So each of these blue circles here indicates a major Ihanzu settlement. And for more information, as well as images and video, I'd encourage you to listen to a talk I gave in 2021, which can be accessed by the QR code that I'll leave on screen for the next few slides. Genetically speaking, Ihanzu is a Bantu language, uh, specifically of a group of languages known as the Takama branch of Bantu. So this includes very large languages like Sukuma and Yamwezi, spoken together by around 10 million people, as well as very small languages such as Kimbu, spoken by closer to 50,000 people. One can see from the table that there exists some fairly strong lexical correspondences between these languages, but this can again be looked at in more detail in our 2021 talk. Uh, this map of the Tanzanian Rift Valley from a classic work by Kiesling Mouse and Nurse in 2008 gives us a rough idea of the languages spoken in the area. So famously, the Rift Valley is one of the only places on the African continent uh, in which all four of Greenberg's 1960s African language phyla are in contact and have been in contact for a long time. So as such, Ihanzu can be shown to exist in a rich and diverse regional language ecology with both Takama branch Bantu languages, to which we will remember Ihanzu is genetically related, as well as non-Takama branch Bantu languages, whose relationship with Ihanzu is considerably more distant. Ihanzu is also in contact with Nilotic languages, the most famous of which is the Eastern Nilotic language Maasai, but contact is more robust with the Southern Nilotic to Toga varieties. Ihanzu is also in contact with Cushitic languages, especially Iraq, and the language Sandawe, possibly a distant member of the Khoikwadi family, is also spoken in the area. Um, and finally, Ihanzu is in close geographical contact with the language isolate Hadza. And in terms of language use and attitudes, uh, as a quick review, I'll, I'll say that, you know, that we need more data on this and we need somebody to really sort of do um, targeted research about this. Um, but um, suffice it to say that Ihanzu has around 26,000 speakers and its usage is certainly declining uh, as its speakers switch to using the national lingua franca Swahili. And in my experience, Ihanzu speakers don't really see their language in a negative light, but the idea of maintaining their language is often submerged in homogenizing discourses of progress and modernization, almost as if the loss of the language is a prerequisite or at least an unavoidable consequence of development. Um, because most speakers of Ihanzu live in Tanzania, and because most students at Bielefeld are in Germany, this raised an interesting challenge for the field methods class. In the end, we decided that we would try to run uh, sessions using Zoom and participants would ask questions in Germany online. And our consultants, Nicholas Snalingigwa Gideon, here in uh, the photo on the upper right hand corner, would answer them from Ibaga in Tanzania. I was present to help with the technology running smoothly, as well as to make the high quality recording of each elicitation session such that participants could re-listen to their work for analysis. This is the second year that we have done this, and as mentioned at the conclusion of our course in 2021, if it weren't for internet technology, Ihanzu would probably never have been able to be considered for use as a target language for the course. Uh, so uh, I think that despite the, um, despite the um, compromises that had to be made and not physically being face to face, I think that um, our opportunity to work with a language that might not have been worked with otherwise, I think is, you know, it really sort of, um, it really sort of balances things out quite nicely. And of course, the image on the screen is of a screen grab of one of our final sessions with uh, Nico. 
Um, happily, uh, our talks given today will be recorded and uh, depending on how they turn out, if we're all happy with it, we can make them openly accessible online, both uh, at Zenodo uh, with a unique uh, DOI, as well as on the YouTube channel linked to here by the QR code. This is particularly exciting as I've shared with you guys in the audience before, uh, because the description of Ihanzu remains largely in its infancy and sort of every contribution made today uh, addresses topics that are sort of at the cutting edge of our understanding of the language. Um, so uh, as uh, I've mentioned in our uh, email, basically this is our schedule today. Uh, I'll try and stick more or less to uh, this schedule. One uh, thing that Yuta pointed out to me before we started was that I didn't uh, build in any breaks. So we might build in a five or 10 minute break somewhere halfway through just so we could sort of collect our thoughts and, uh, and continue on. Uh, but this is sort of going to be our rough, uh, our rough schedule. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, everything that will be discussed.